guys, it's Julia and welcome back to my channel. And for today's video, I'm going to be doing a book review. And today I'm going to be reviewing Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides. This book is an adult, adult kind of modern classic, I believe, published in the 1990s. And basically this is about the five Lisbon daughters who all commit suicide. And we follow the narrative of these boys who live across the street. And they kind of see everything that goes on with the girls. And basically the narrative is really interesting because these boys are narrating it from when they're older so they're telling the story from when they were younger and all about the girls and their parents and their social lives and you know how it goes <laughs> basically i don't reread books often i've read maybe i've reread maybe a total of like two books in my life um i think i read dear john by nicholas sparks twice when i was like nine but other than that i've only read let it snow twice and this is yeah, I just finished my reread of this and I made sure to tab on the top and bottom and highlight and annotate and do all this stuff to it. So I can say now that I have a pretty good understanding of the story. Not that I didn't the first time, but like I just never, some things I didn't pick up on and it was just really cool to reread it. Basically this book is extre like extremely interesting and extremely dark so I wanted to talk about it with you guys. But basically, first off, we'll say the trigger warnings. This book does have trigger warnings for suicide. This book does have trigger warnings for suicide, depression, and PTSD. So keep that in mind before picking this up and before watching this review. Basically, the first part will be spoiler free and then we'll get into some spoilers along the way. But this book is incredibly sad again. And if you're not in the mood for a sad book, don't pick it up. But it just deals with a lot of sorrow and grief and it really brings an interesting insight to a lot of different topics. So basically for the girls, we have Cecilia, Lux, Bonnie, Mary, and Therese. Basically the first one to go is Cecilia, which kind of starts this whole book off. And I'm not gonna say how, but like it's on the first page, but then it's, never mind. Um, but Cecilia is the youngest, she's 13, and that's kind of what shakes this family. Um, the parents are extremely overprotective and religious and they don't let the daughters go out, they don't let them date, they don't let them wear to reveal like revealing clothes. They basically only go to church and school and then they're in, they're at home. So, you know, not the average teenager, but considering they all range from like 13, 15, 16, 17, like they're all in that range. So they are still growing up and they should go out and experience some things and you know it's complicated and Cecilia is unfortunately the first one to go and she is 13 and this shakes the family it really sets the mood for the story it definitely just the bomb just crashes and it just sends everyone for a turn but like i really liked how the guys described each of their personalities and like later in the book you see how they always like on the news or on just in general they always refer to them as the lisbon daughters like as they were like one group like they they didn't classify them as individuals in a way and i thought it was really interesting how the boys kind of described that and how we saw a lot of their personalities we didn't see some people in depth as others like we saw a lot of cecilia we saw a lot of lux and we saw a lot of a, a little bit of trees mary and bonnie we did see some of but not as much as the others i wouldn't think actually no we saw more of mary maybe it's just bonnie then <laughs> it tells like such a raw story it's not something like you're waiting for this big reveal it's not like something where um not like what you probably think it's gonna be like and it's just the writing style is so clever and the story is just so raw and it's just so insightful and sad and interesting and overall this book was just heartbreaking like if you're looking for like a book that wraps everything up perfectly and you want a perfect explanation you're not really going to get it from this book but nonetheless it's a really really good book second time around my jaw was still dropping i knew it was going to happen but maybe some little things i forgot about and my my jaw was just dropping and I was like oh my gosh like it just told the story like totally grabs you and then like throws you into this scenario and it's just so much but it's so good and it's so raw and I just love the way he told the story and yeah so that wraps up my non-spoilery thoughts for The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides um 
make sure to check this book out if you guys are interested. I really enjoyed it. Um, I gave it a solid 4 out of 5 stars, maybe more of a 4.25 or 4.5, but it's up there. It's a really good book and I would very much recommend it to you guys. Just know that it deals with some harsher topics, so if you can take that, definitely pick this up. Now getting into the spoilery thoughts, so if you haven't, you know, read this, then you should leave so you don't get spoiled. Let's get into the spoilers. It starts this book off and what really like punches me in the gut is when the boys describe the paramedics going into the Lisbon house and how familiar they are with the house and that just shows that they're always there like it just they had they felt so like there was so much familiarity from the paramedics going to the house and it's like at the end it's just like they didn't even put on the sirens like they knew what to expect it's just heartbreaking <laughs> Cecilia's in the hospital after her suicide attempt the first time when she cuts her wrists in the bathtub she um i remember the doctor was like what are you doing honey you haven't even lived yet and then the girl's just like you haven't been a 13 year old girl have you like you don't understand i just thought that was really interesting like i also thought when that boy dominic jumped, jumped off the roof jumped off his roof because he got rejected um he didn't die but like the boys were watching and cecilia was watching and it was just like father I found really interesting he was a teacher which I didn't like you only learn like maybe 80 pages in um but he was just you could see how much he loved his kids and despite all like the things that go on um you know it shatters both the parents completely like you would expect it to but I just thought it was so interesting how the father like longed for his son like he just wanted a son so bad and I was like interesting also how Cecilia wore that old beaten up wedding wedding dress all the time I was just like that's interesting like that's okay <laughs> this one line where the boys make the connection to how girls feel and I just thought that was really interesting and like I think it's interesting when genders can kind of see the struggles of the opposite gender um you know both ways so I, I love the setting it was set in the 1970s and there was like old records and there was like just the clothes was a bit different and you know how it goes it was an older setting which i really liked in her cigarettes like she was the main bad girl of the bunch she like to smoke and have sex and all the jazz that goes on with some teenagers and yeah so she was pretty bad but you know it was interesting how much she smoked but i was like okay Something I really found really interesting was how much grief affected the family as soon as Cecilia was like went and how the father's personality just changed in ways. Like they saw he had this boy's retainer in the house and he was like, oh, you know, like I would usually go and return this to him because it's a piece of orthodontic and it's really expensive, you know, it's like, it's really expensive. And um, usually he would go and give it back, but no, he just drops it in the toilet and flushes it. I thought that was like such a powerful moment. I was like, then we have Lux and Trip, and this is where things take off. They they go to the dance, and so Trip is like talking to the father, and he's trying to like date Lux, and you know how it goes. And Trip basically gets all his other friends to go with the other girls, so they all go in a pack. Lux comes home drunk and after curfew, so she gets in a lot of. And basically, after that happened, it was a big deal for the parents, so they basically got isolated like they never left the house except for like school and church and they just went into like a major isolation mode and that was really really difficult to read and lux destroys her records which were just so weird like her rock and roll records her parents like just make her destroy them i'm like uh -huh, what you doing like so someone made me destroy my music mm, no also the notes and the phone calls from the boys we see as kind of the very last part of the book and how they're communicating and they're like please save us help us so near the end the boys go to help them and they're like literally outside their window and Lux distracts them of course she does um and basically so the other girls can go kill themselves and then Lux goes and does the same oh my um I don't want to cry I'm wearing makeup <laughs> but oh my god the distraction killed me like i knew that was coming but like just everything and how we they describe each of the girls and how they killed themselves and then the last one mary actually lives and she later kills herself after like she takes sleeping pills later but still it's just 
heart shattering and the, oh my god but basically that's how it ends <laughs> and the boys never really understood why the first girl killed themselves and they described the other girls like everyone was like oh it's not a surprise like in the telling they just thought it was so normal that the other girls all did too and psychologists or whatever were saying like it was probably post-traumatic stress disorder from dealing with the loss of their youngest sister and then the boys were like well we don't still know why the youngest sister committed suicide so that's why you don't really get a full closure like you don't know why but you don't need to know why it's just i just thought it was super interesting the way the story was told and yeah <laughs> the shortest one i can find because some of them are really long basically what we have here is a dreamer somebody out of touch with reality when she jumped she probably thought she'd fly I'm just, oh, guys, anyways, I'll see you guys very soon with a new video. Let me know your thoughts down below.